What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We've got a special guest and even more slightly smaller special guest that's in uh, on the top of the show. We've got a lot to, of ground to cover today. Uh, we're going to talk about how to deliver uh, your best listing presentation. We've got somebody here who has uh, essentially seen uh, 65 different listing presentations from some of the top agents in San Diego, uh, along with homeowner reactions and real feedback back from actual homeowners who have then gone on to hire and or fire or reject them and, and horrible, horrible cases. Some of them were thrown into uh, crocodile pits. I'm not sure how that works, but it makes for great TV. Um, we're going to get into all that. We've got Gene here with, uh, with us uh, that'll give kind of a, a tech tip and social media tip to get us started. But first, the junior grandmaster himself sporting what I can only be described as a sand eggshell jacket today. It's very stylish. Greg, how I was thinking I was going for Miami chic. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, I, I can I, I call, feel, can I I call you tubs? I, what? Can I call you tubs? <laughs> No, you can't. That, that oh, talks damn. about my weight. You know, you know I feel bad about my weight, Matt. Damn it in public again. All right. That was a Vice, Miami Vice reference, but that's fine. Okay. Miami Vice, <laughs> number one TV show. Anyways, guys, welcome to the Friday show. We got some fucking epic shit going on today. You know, we got two of my favorite peoples here. You know, Derek is just going to make it rain on uh, information about listing presentations like Matt alluded to. And then my boy, Gene Velpe, my savior in all things digital is here. He has uh, swooped in this morning and saved my hairy ass from what could have been a disastrous event. So, Gene, I am so glad I hired you. You have won already earned your wages. Now, back to the working, you go, man. <laughs> Saving Greg from his uh, his own dyslexic self. My, I, I didn't write it. <laughs> That's the ironic part. Right. Jesus. Oh, my God. So, first of all, Gene, Derek, how are you guys today? What's up, man? Rock and roll. How you guys doing? That's right. Good, doing? good, good. We are doing awesome. This is going to be a, a great show. So, Gene, let's start with you first. What have you got for us today in terms of uh, a tech tip? And then actually, Derek dropped a serious uh, little app uh, app on us. So we're gonna we're gonna actually have him talk about that. I think in a second. But uh, Gene, what do you got for us today? So, first of all, I'm starting to get a complex because three times in the show opener, as you mentioned to me, I heard the words small and little. Right, <laughs> little tech. Tip. Referring to the length of your segment. Your segment uh, of the okay. show. Uh, just, okay. That was not a euphemism. Either, uh, let's just, just be clear. I mean, I keep hearing it. I'm starting to get get a complex. And then the <laughs> other thing I want to say is, yo, Greg, fat guy in a little coat. <laughs> <laughs> you dick. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know that. Oh um, my God. So here's what I got for you today. So I'm going to drop this one piece of info on everybody uh, from a tech piece. So we keep talking every week about – uh, doing video. Video content's huge, and I know Derek is going to jump into how important it is and what he does, too. But from uh, an agent perspective, a lot of times what I get from them is I don't know what I would say, and I don't know where I would get my content from. And what I'm about to tell you works for your videos, and these only have to be a minute at a pop. Do one, one a week, one every five days, however you want to do it. Start with at least two a month. And this also will apply to your social media content as well as your written blogs, if that's the route you choose to go. And here's what it is. Everybody responds to email. When you have your email uh, sent box open, notice I sent sent box, not your inbox. Your sent box is a place where you have responded to questions that people around you have. And for some odd reason, they've come to you as the expert. So what I always tell my clients is if you give me 15 minutes with your scent box, I'll come up with six months minimum of video or blog content. So go back and respond to any – look at an email you responded to yesterday. What happened with this HUD? How, what's this line item on the HUD? Or what, do, what does title insurance mean? I guarantee you can strip at least 10 one-minute segments from the emails from the last week alone. Wow. That is what, what if the agent that. doesn't currently have any clients and no business? Then they're screwed. <laughs> then, then you need to respond to those recipes that you answered when your mom said, how do you make those meatballs? You do a video on your meatballs. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> I had to throw that out there. That is actually a very good idea, Greg. I'm surprised you haven't thought about that. You're always, uh, you're always thinking of places to, uh, to find content for your videos. Uh, you know what? Because I write really boring emails, and I don't think my subject lines are very good. It's like, pick, or look at this, or 
I think you'll like to read that. I don't think you're going to get very good shit from me. But uh, you know what? I think that most people who have a writing um, ability, such as yourself, Matt, I mean, go into your inbox, right, your sent box right now and see what you've sent out. I guarantee you, you could pull some good stuff. Derek, what about you? What would your, what would your top three emails be that you've sent out? Top three emails that I've sent out? That you could use as uh, content, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, that's a good question. You know, I'm not really sure. As far as content is concerned, I do so many different things. I have, I produce like four different shows. So it would be tough for me to say. But if you're talking about video content for real estate agents, let's say your audience, um, I think the most important thing to do is to uh, get away from generalizations and, and just really drill down to stuff that's specific. Uh, the biggest issue I get is people come to me and they want to make videos. And they're like, oh, I want to do a market update. Um, bad news is no one really cares about a market update. However, if you say this is why you shouldn't sell your home in this zip code, this, you know, you should wait until this month, that's something that might actually be relevant. So I think just relevance is the key when you're coming up with content. What's relevant and, and how to, you know, get it to an audience that it's relevant to is really the key that we're, we're sharing with people. Yeah, have something emotionally based that you want to write about because you, you usually write email headlines as something someone will catch their eye, right? Not as something that you'll, they'll breeze right past. So, you know, Gene, Freaking awesome tip, man. You just yeah, blow people's very minds. I know. I'm looking, I'm looking at my sent box right now, which is a lot of uh, podcast links being sent out. But yeah, there's there's ways that I could spin everything that I've sent within the last couple of days that I could make a video on that, like how to set expectations with clients, how to pitch someone on a uh, on coming on to a podcast as a guest, um, how to properly send a link out to somebody so that you don't confuse the heck out of them when you want them to hop on a Zoom call with you. Uh, all very good and applicable things that we can all learn from. Yeah, I actually, I yeah, actually listen, have something I found. You know, I, what, here's here's one thing I want to I want to offer to you. What what I find in the real estate field that people do a lot is that they overthink it. So they go, you know, well, I don't know what I would talk about. Like, why would anybody want to hear about these items? Most real estate agents I deal with know know more about the the everyday things that happen in real estate than anybody that's out there. When I as a consumer, when I call a real estate agent, I'm calling them for their expertise in these areas that I don't understand what negotiating a contract means. And I don't quite mean what happens during a home inspection. These guys have all forgotten and ignored more things that the regular consumer thinks about on a regular basis. So don't overlook the fact that, you know, there's you may think it's stupid and it's inconsequential, but somebody out there might need to hear it. So just go into it, yeah. do it a couple of times. You only need a minute at a pop and see what sticks. Love it. Awesome shit. Yeah, so two different just to, to, to dovetail that with the video thing, there's two reasons to cre create a video. One is because you want to use it for marketing, and two is because you want to use it to save you time. So for a lot of people, I think the first thing they should do is make the videos that will save them time. In other words, what questions are you getting asked over and over and over? Mm -hmm. Make those videos first, you know, so that when people ask you the question, you go, hey, I, here's, a, here's a video I did that details the answer to that question. Um, because it will save you time and it, and it does make you look professional, but that, that's a, that's a real reason to do a video. If you're going to do something that's marketing based, something that's timely, then it's just got to be really catered to a specific audience and you have to promote it and get it right to that specific audience. Otherwise it's, it's almost pointless to do it. Yeah, yeah actually, Matt, well, I was covered with Frank on his show. He said the exact same thing, go in there and record everything you do. So when next time it comes around, just send it right on out. I thought, you know, that's two for yeah. two. Yeah, I actually, can't, I'm, and I'm trying to get better at this, but I have a um, a master tutorial tracking spreadsheet that lists out the low, medium, and high value activities of like people on my staff, and just making sure that they're all, and and that I am too, like as we go through our daily work, like going through and checking off, like hey, we have a tutorial for this. Here's the link on YouTube to an unlisted video, uh, and just getting everything that's that's in our business like documented. Um, you can do the same thing with um, with common questions or requests that you get from clients like, you know, uh, hey, what's, uh, you know, like like you mentioned, like title insurance or, you know, just whatever the case is, just anything that comes up uh, in your real estate transactions that are constant, that are that are recurring and just build a little spreadsheet of all those things and check off when you have a video for it. Sweet. All right. Hmm. All right, Derek, you had a uh, you had a little tech tip that you dropped on us, uh, an app that you found that you use. I want to I want you to tell everybody what that is first. For anybody who has trouble with sleeping um, or just like sleeping deeply, like if, you, if you're a type of person that has crazy dreams or you wake up a lot at night, um, let's say for whatever reason, go to the bathroom, whatever, this uh, meditation app here, as you'll see in my meditation folder, let me try to get this. It's called Sleep Relax. You see it right there? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see that? Okay. It's a little sleep hypnosis that you really, you don't even have to pay attention because he talks to your unconscious. 
and what happens is it, it programs you that whenever it starts playing, um, you fall asleep. You go to this super deep sleep for like four hours straight, and you'll wake up completely refreshed. You won't dream. You'll just be like dead for four hours, and you'll wake up, boom, ready to go. So I don't know what I'd do without it, but for people who have trouble sleeping or if you don't get a lot of time to sleep, you know, you especially have like a short window, you really need quality sleep, that app right there, you're going to send me a Christmas card. Trust me if you try it. <laughs> well, based upon what we were talking about off air, yeah, I am going to send you a Christmas card because those dreams. <laughs> Are you sick of the hot yeah. chicks chasing you with guns, dude? <laughs> <laughs> dude it fucking sucks, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. All right. So before we move on and dig, dig into what Derek's got going on with the show he's producing and all the cool stuff he's got going on, uh, Gene, remind everybody again how and why they should contact you right this second. Why? Because I'm handsome. Uh, <laughs> where? <laughs> Besides that? Uh, n no reason, because you want to chat. Uh, I love helping people and talking. GVImedia.com or Gene at GVImedia.com. Awesome. Very, very cool. And people should go Thank there you, and boys. connect with you right now. All right, Gene. Well, they really see should. See you on the next I mean, one. He's already saved my bacon today, guys. So if he can save mine, he can definitely save yours. Gene, you're a master of all all things digital, my friend. <laughs> see, boys. Have a good one. Derek, good luck with these two. You're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gene. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, Derek. So uh, so give everybody kind of a, a, the 60-second bio on kind of who you are, where you are, and what you do. So uh, I produce uh, television shows now, a couple different talk shows, a couple different reality shows. We're starting our third reality show soon. Uh, the one that's relevant to today is Win This Listing, which is sort of like HGTV merges with The Bachelor. Um, and essentially what we do is we have casting calls for people who are selling their homes. A lot of times they're people who've had bad experiences in the past or the people who just aren't sure like how to maximize the situation. And so what we do is we then cast three real estate agents that we believe would be really good uh, to help them sell their home and usually also buy another home. And um, we bring three agents in. They compete. They go through a process. They get eliminated one at a time until we have, you know, the final rose winner. Um, and that person wins the listing and usually a buy side, too. So um, I'm kind of in a unique position as a producer and host of that show where I've seen personally, you know, about 65 different listing presentations. Mm -hmm. from really well-vetted, high-quality real estate agents. And um, as a fly on the wall, and, and really, I don't know if anyone in, in the world has seen that many listing presentations. Uh, I don't know why they would. You know, this is Ooh, such God, a rare yeah. circumstance. <laughs> so it's like, it's a, weird, it's a weird thing. But I have it all on film. I have the homeowners on film. We have six cameras set up for, for each presentation. So I have, you know, all sorts of shots of everybody. I can look and see how everyone's reacting to everything that's being said. And um, I think it just gives me a, a, a different look as a non-agent, never been an agent, never sold a home other than a home that I've owned personally as the home seller. Uh, it gives me a different perspective on things. And I can kind of look at it, not it from a, like, you know, one of the, like a fairy coaching method or from a, hey, I'm a, I'd sell 200 uh, homes a year, watch my listing presentation and try to do what I do. And that stuff, I, I feel like, unfortunately, there's less value in it because it's not apples to apples. Mm -hmm. But with mm -hmm. this stuff, at the end of the day, you know, the number one most important thing is that they trust you, right? I mean, that, that's the number one thing is that they have to, to trust you. So the question is, what builds trust? And that's something that's debatable. Hmm. And if you look at what a lot of people train to build trust and some of the, the questions for building relationships that people are clearly trained to ask, that's really, really not what it boils down to. So what I brought for you guys today was like, you know, I think, what did I have here? Like seven different things that I think are absolute musts. Uh, six, I would say that are musts. One that I think would is really smart and nifty to offer. And then one little PS. So <laughs> that's, that's what I've got. If you guys are ready for Love the it. first one. I, yeah, I'm absolutely. I'm I'm ready. Yeah. Oh wait. Well, first before we do it, what was the worst right. listing presentation you ever saw, and how badly did they fuck up? <laughs> I've got to hear this. <laughs> oh, right for the jugular. Oh, like well, we flew this shit. guy named Greg in from the Bay Area. Man, he was. Whew, he was a dude. <laughs> it was brutal. Um, you know, some I, I will tell you, there's been several that have been absolutely excruciating. I mean, um, like nailed absolutely. Down a Worse than that. Like, you know, 
just horrible. Like, spit it out. Like, <laughs> people who are just not ready to have a conversation, you know? And on the show, I should I should also preface that, you know, on the show, we, we have a 35-minute time limit. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the presentation is a 35-minute time limit, and then if they make it to the next round, then they get an unlimited amount of time with the homeowners so that the homeowners can ask all their questions. So there is a little bit of format involved. Mm-hmm. Um, but like when someone comes in and they have a 35 minute time limit and they're done after 12 minutes, <laughs> oops, <laughs> you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna win. <laughs> you ain't winning. So, uh, I've seen that happen. Um, I've seen people just absolutely shit the sheets with almost every word. Like just, did, 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 that, you know, it's like, so there is a certain mm-hmm. level of, of difference because we have cameras, we have so many cameras there and mm-hmm. there's sort of that going on. That I think that has made it a little bit intimidating for people who are camera shy or who can't just like focus on what's really happening and stay present with the homeowners in front of them. But um, that's definitely, you know, step number one, tip number one is to just be fully 100 percent present mm-hmm. with the homeowners. I mean, be, be all there, be right there and nowhere else. Be 100 percent there like phone is off, not even in the room. You know, and and you are just right there, 100. percent So that's that's definitely number one. And you can tell when people are elsewhere because they're more worried about getting in what they're thinking about and all the things that they've been preparing for than they are to hear what the homeowners have been preparing for. So you know, that's um, actually something that I do on a every time I go to a listing presentation, I actually leave my phone in my car as a sign of respect because you know what, anything that's going to take place on that phone can freaking wait. I am at a job interview. I mean, when's the last time you went to a job interview and you're at the third round of the job interview and you're like, oh, hold on, I gotta, uh, I gotta grab this real quick. Yeah, baby. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, I'll pick up the mug. Okay. Kisses. Okay, bye. All right. So what I was saying. <laughs> and it's not even. And Greg, it's not even that. Like, if my if my phone were to ring right now and it were to go off, even though I turn it off and I I, I stay right here, as a as a homeowner, it goes, oh wow, you know, he's going to, right now, we don't even have his undivided or her undivided attention. What's going to happen? We're in the midst of a transaction. Like how busy is this person? So, you know, there's a, there's a number of different things that are are important, but I think, you know, if you want to build trust, first thing is you have to be able to be a hundred percent present with them, at least in that moment. If you can't be right there, they will smell it, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you a couple of things, you know, I've been, that are not on my list that I've been shocked about. Almost every single time, I have no idea, by the way, when you watch the show, I have no idea who's been chosen. I don't let them tell me who's on the card until I reveal it right there. And I am genuinely shocked almost every time who they choose because it seems like there's always something on paper that would make sense to go with this person or that person. A few things. Number one, being the local expert doesn't seem to carry as much weight as you would think it, it does. Uh, We've seen multiple times where the no-brainer local agent who sold all the houses in the neighborhood doesn't win. Um, You know, the the agents who sell the most homes also, same thing. Um, It's it's not about that. Really, at the end of the day, it it boils down to this trust thing. So, how Mm -hmm. do you how do you earn that trust? And I'm gonna I'm gonna start delivering some stuff right here if you guys are ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, First and foremost, you cannot ever show up for a listing presentation empty-handed. And I don't just mean your your paperwork and your brochures and all that shit. I mean a gift. You have to bring some sort of small, thoughtful gift to the homeowners. You have to show them that you aren't someone who's outside of their circle. You're inside of their circle. And so what I mean by that is don't always bring cupcakes from the local cupcake place to everybody. Do a little research. Look them up on Facebook. See what they're posting about. They're a football fan. They're this or that. Bring something small and say, you know, I know you're a huge Packers fan, so here's a little Brett Favre bobblehead that I mm-hmm. thought you might think was cool. If you do something like that, you just jumped so far ahead in the game in comparison to where the other people are. No matter what takes place after that, you have just ingrained yourself. You've bought so many of their brain cells with that one little small $16.99 gift that it is – Unbelievable. And one thing for sure, if you're up against, you know, two other agents, there's three of you total, and the other two bring a gift and you don't, you're done. Mm-hmm. That's that I've seen a hundred percent of the time. If two agents bring something and you don't, you're out. It doesn't you know, matter what happens. 
There's something interesting that's very, very profound about what you're saying, Derek. And if you guys haven't thought about that before, I encourage you to go do that and start looking at that. But <clears throat> what we do is we bring C's candy. You know, it's a little box of candy, you know, not a big deal. Because um, a lot of the folks we work with are, are older folks. And so working with them, they love it. And I say, here, here's a little gift for you just to, you know, something sweet. You know, who, who doesn't like C's candy? Big old smile on my face. Every time I get people going, wow, that that's amazing. Thank you. That really hit the spot. I'm like, good, you eat it because that shit fucking sucks. I hate sweets. Here you go. Get it out of my office. My, <laughs> my God. They love it. Okay. <laughs> And it, you're right. It makes it makes it does make an impression. So I love the idea of researching them, though. And I'm thinking back to back to this lady Jan, who I just did a, a CMA for on Friday. Dude, she's not on social media, bro. So I mean, I for that, would you agree C's would be a good alternative as a default if you couldn't find anything about them, or what have you seen work even better than maybe a candy? No, yeah, I think that uh, well, uh, if you if you're gonna bring if you're gonna bring a candy. Um, if possible, make it something that you, you made yourself. So like, uh, there's, there's only one agent who's been completely undefeated on my show. Hmm. That agent has, is three for three. Um, uh, and this is a really tough show. Like I have a lot of agents that are one and two, one and three. Like there's, there's people who've been on multiple times. And, um, what that agent does is they bake cookies themselves oh, and damn. bring them in Ooh. freshly baked cookies We're yeah so doing that. i'm so doing that with white so, chocolate now oh yeah <laughs> with white, oh, with white chocolate. i'm not saying the baked cookies are winning the listing but i'm telling you it's an advantage for yeah. sure yeah. and because there's no way that agent should have won all three it's too hard there's too many good agents involved to be able to win three in a row without doing all these little things mm -hmm. um so for someone that you you don't know any any gift is better than nothing dude like i think mm -hmm. that it just shows that you give a shit beyond the transaction, you know, and that's really what you're trying to to show someone is that I care about you more than just this. Mm. Like I care about your well-being. I hope you're having a good day. Mm -hmm. I, w I hope you have a, a freaking great afternoon. I want to make sure that here's some chocolates. That's better than nothing. So the key is, the tip is never be empty handed. And we're not talking about brochures and all that shit. That's something else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if that, you come empty handed completely, you're just fucking stupid. I mean, come like, here I am. What are your other two wishes? Come on, let's see the house. <laughs> By the way, here's my business card. This thing's oh. super cool. I got two of them for you. <laughs> <laughs> here's a row of business cards for all your friends. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's that's just that's just life tip number mm -hmm. one seventeen. Never hand more than one business card to somebody for God's sake. <laughs> um, so the speaking of brochures, so the other stuff that you're bringing, a lot of people are bringing brochures, numbers, comps, stuff like that. Everybody does that. Um, one of the things that I hear from agents who come on the show is that because they're coming on the show, they're preparing more than they've ever prepared for a listing presentation before, and so they're creating a huge elaborate presentation that they can now use on future presentations, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things is, and this is definitely, you know, big tip number three, I think we're on is, you know, don't talk too many numbers. Don't talk too many numbers mm -hmm. unless the people are asking about the numbers. Don't just start burying them with numbers, comps, sale prices, this, that ratios. Remember the average person just like shuts off when you start talking too many numbers. If they feel like they're in math class, they're gonna do exactly what they did in math class. They're just gonna like do, 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 do. And that's the last thing you want because you need to be memorable, right? Not forgettable. If you talk too many numbers, you become forgettable very freaking quickly. Um, and that's what I've seen homeowners just shut down, I mean completely shut off, tune out. And the crazy thing is a lot of times agents aren't able to see that, either that or they see it, but they keep going because they think they have to talk all these numbers. It's not, it's not true. Like, like the, the, reality the reality is that you can have, you can all, have all these numbers. Hey, I have all these comps. I have all this data, data, data and this information you can see in here. I have this, all these houses sold for and all this stuff. If you'd like, if you'd like to go that, over that, you can go over that, go over that detail. detail. You know, you know, here it is. You can look at it on your own. Let's talk Let's talk about what's important to you. I think that's the key. Are we? Are you guys getting audio feedback right now? Yep, yep, I'm hearing it too. So, uh, Derek, you want to double check your connection and and just maybe unplug and replug back in? It's it's getting some uh, some bad feedback. But oh, really? Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God, I don't hear it. And, and I've heard uh, I've heard Aaron Wittenstein kind of allude to the same thing. He he uses it very very 
strategically when he's looking at helping someone price and kind of overcoming the price objections like he's noticed that people kind of get lost in the numbers so the only time he does that and really talks numbers is when he wants to in kind of intentionally confuse things a little bit just so that they relax and trust him on the price that he's set which he knows is what's what's best for the market and because yeah it's very it is very easy just to kind of bury people and, and details are that way too uh, but numbers especially yeah it's very hard to follow a lot of people are very visual if they if you can't show them the numbers it's a, it's very difficult to keep all that stuff in your head if you're not like an auditory learner. I mean, I can speak, I can, I can tell you that from experience. Yeah. You know, something that I do, I, I always ask them, guys, what's more important? You know, should, do you guys want to go over the numbers? Do we want to talk about the marketing that we're going to be doing for you? Would you like to show me the home? You know, what, what, how would you like to run this? I mean, I give them the opportunity because if they, if they want to hear numbers, great, we'll sit down, we'll crunch out the numbers, we'll go over the comps. Um, and I ask them, do you want me to go through the entire, you know, market evaluation or do you want me, or do you guys want to go through it and I just hit the bullet points? Most of the time they're like, dude, just hit the bullet points, man. I'm like, thank you, God, because I do not want to go over the damn numbers. You know, because it, it's boring. It's just boring. I mean, it's it, I mean, it's like it's like you're trying to you're you're begging for the business if you try to prove your worth in, in the numbers. I mean, you need to prove your worth and the likability and the ability to get the home sold for the shortest amount of time with the most money. I mean, that's what you're ultimately there to do, not wow them with your spreadsheet. Because nobody does spreadsheet wowing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Derek. What's uh, what's the second tip in the list? Um. I'm not sure which number we're on now, but I think uh, I think we're on four. I think we're on four. All right. <laughs> I think so. First one was okay. be present. Uh, never show up empty-handed. Don't talk yeah. too many numbers. There we go. Okay. Um, there we go. And then this one is one that. And by the way, we should talk about commission percentages at some point here too. But the the, the next one is definitely never say anything bad about the home to mm. the homeowners. Mm. Not okay. until after they have signed and you win that listing never say anything even if it's like yeah the kitchen needs work or it's something completely obvious it's very dated over here don't say anything bad about the house because hmm. it's yeah. important they they want to believe that you believe in the property as much as they do mm -hmm. and that you see yeah. all the beautiful elements in it and you can turn them off so quickly by saying something even if it's totally obvious like the, you, you know the carpet definitely needs to be replaced that sounds like something that's obvious when you have a 20 year old carpet don't say anything bad about the house. That'll that you can save that for later. That's not important yet. Yeah, that's really, really, really true. Because the, the, guys, we are talking about their home. It's a house to you. It's their home. So if you criticize it, you're actually criticizing them and their choices. And, you know, and their lifestyle. You know, I had a uh, an elderly couple I went and talked to, and I, you know, I, Derek, like you, I'm like, mm, this is great. And the kitchen needed to be remodeled. I noticed a stain up on the ceiling. You know, they have popcorn, you know, you know, ceiling still and everything else. And the, the wife actually, at the end of the listing presentation, she goes, okay, that's really nice fluff, but cut the BS. What do I need to get done to sell my house? I said, well, I, I'm being honest, your home is great. She's like, yeah, I get that. I live here. It's beautiful. What do I need to do? I said, okay, because she was pushing me. She was looking for someone who wasn't full of shit. So I'm like, okay, see this crack right here? We need to see what the foundation is below that. The popcorn ceilings, we need to identify what that stain is right there and see what it is. And then we should probably scrape this and let's go into the kitchen. We'll whiten the cabinets. We'll bring our stager in. We'll take some of your treasures and we're going to take them out of the house so that people can see the home and not your and not your possessions because we want people to fall in love, in love with the house. And her, her mouth was just like, thank you. That's what I've been wanting to hear. See, honey, I told you we need to do work. And I'm like, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but it's true though. That is really interesting though. Yeah, I'm, 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 my mind is spinning because I'm thinking about, like I tend to be on the very analytical side and I'm wondering now, like it just in my own conversations with people about like starting up podcasts and Derek, you know, if you're, you're chatting with someone about starting up a television show with them, it makes you wonder if you've made comments like that about the potential content that should have waited until after you get the agreement to move forward. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have to, you know, um, you have to let people, especially in a home sale situation where there is a lot of emotion involved, they can take it personally, you know, when you say something. So I think it's just important to, you know, let them know that you see all the benefits and mm -hmm. the things that you need to work on can be brought up later because you don't want to stab yourself, you know, right off the get go and lose the opportunity. Yeah. Um, it, <clears throat> Talking uh, commission rates is something that um, I think is really important for us to discuss too, even though it's not on my list, because there have been people who've tried to come in and offer less commissions and stuff like that has never worked, mm -mm. has never worked. The person who is, comes in and discounts their service has never won the show. 
So um, I've even we've even one of our shows coming up here recently. Um, oh gosh, a little spoil. I can't spoil it. Uh, but it's it, you have you have to uh, you have to to check it out because you'll be surprised if you look at the different commissions that were offered and ultimately who won. Um, it's it's a little bit of a shocker. So it, it, again, it's not about that, and it, and it's if for agents who make it about that, um, it's you're missing the boat. That's not what people make their decisions based on in general, and I, and I've seen it dozens of times. So something Very to keep in mind. Very, very true. I mean, if you can protect your commission up front and be able to justify it, because people will pay you 25% uh, commission for 25% if you bring enough value and they can see that it's worth it for them. So if you can bring enough value up front and preload your close with value loaded up in, in the beginning of the, of the presentation, you're not going to have to defend your commission. They're going to be like, only six? Fuck, man. That's like a seven or eight. Where in my book, all right, that's a bargain. But I mean, there's also, you know, the tactics and techniques for going in and, you know, defending your commission, like we've talked about several times. You know, I mean, in our market, it's, a, it's an average of 5% commission total. So what I do, and Derek, let me know your thoughts on this, is I say, well, Matt, Julie, and your three obese little wood denting babies, uh, I would like to, uh, well, I, I want to let you know that uh, he, uh, my he leads. Commission... He leads with that. It's that that's a, he definitely leads with that. <laughs> <laughs> he leads with insulting my imaginary children, then tries to justify his commission. It's great. It's the silver bullet. Silver bullet. In, influence sucking little little you know offspring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I say is, my commission is only two and a half percent. Let's come together and figure out what we want to offer to the buyers agents, because they're hearing two and a half percent, two and a half percent. Now it's like okay, now mine's locked in. What do we want to offer to the buyer's agent? Traditional, it's going to be two and a half percent, so we get the most showings. But I've seen people sh offer one percent; it hasn't worked out so well. We can offer two, or two and a half, or even three to really incentivize them if you'd like to get the home sold fast. What would you like to do? And every time I've done that, I haven't had a problem because again, they're hearing it split two and a half, two and a half, so in their mind is just two and a half. I mean, have you seen people do that, Derek? Yeah, actually, um, that's that seems to be the the smart way to go about it. Um, I haven't seen people necessarily say, what do you want to offer the buyer's agent? But I've heard people split it up and say, you know, this is this is what my charge would be. And then typically we would offer this much to the, the buying agent. Um, yeah. So, yeah, people are splitting up. Letting them that perspective, you know, let, letting them inside, you know, because they don't know. They're thinking 5% goes to you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because you can't assume sense. anything. They know much less than what you think they know. They know far yeah. less than that. Yeah. And that's that's something that's really important. Let, let me ask just you a guys good a general question. assumption for for all of life. <laughs> just just all assume life. the person across from you knows way less than you think they know. Matt, <laughs> don't you start. Don't you start with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maybe man. they don't know how to spell. You never know. Hey. Like you'd think they know how to spell That's right. words. Like, like the copywriter that Greg hired for his website, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. What was the over-under? <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you guys a question okay. in, in regards to this. So if you have one hour to spend with a, a homeowner in a listing presentation setting, what percentage of that time do you think you're talking versus they're talking? 85, 15. I'd rather have them talk as much as humanly possible. I don't. Yeah, I want them to 80, be. 20. I want them to be in charge of. Uh, you know, in charge of the, the this process. It's their home. They need to find value in me. They need to bond with me. I need to ask the right questions. Allow them to talk. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Use them in that proportion. Allow the other person to be proud of their house, even if it's a shovel of, of, of just a, a lean to. <laughs> but if it's their lean to, you know, let them be proud of it. You know, and you know, or is there, you know, palatial mansion, which it takes you an hour to walk through this, you know, 25 bedrooms, whatever it is, guys, allow them to brag, allow them to be really proud of that yellow paint that's in the kitchen. Who cares? But it's there. You know, let them show you the updates that they've done. Ask questions about the updates. When did you do it? Where was the inspiration? You know, where did you when did you grow, did your did your kids grow up here? Do they often come back with their kids? That must be amazing. Do you guys do Thanksgivings here? That must be. You know, it's going to be hard to not do Thanksgivings and Christmas here. Where are you guys going to do your next ones? Allow these questions to take place and let them roll through the emotions because they're going to start going through the emotions of this process. Um, and I, that's what I found to be the best. Like when I interviewed with Jan the other day. 
I, uh, I, I, she and I were sitting on the couch next to each other, and her body language got got really frigid when I was talking to her about the team. So I shut up about the team and asked her, Jan, it must be great to have your kids come back over here for Thanksgiving. And she's like, oh, my God, my sister with her three kids, it is hell in here. I mean, those guys are nuts. My son has one kid, and that's a little bit less nuts, and she opened up to me about it, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I got to hear about the dramas with her and everything else, and it, 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 she went from turning this way, she turned back towards me, and was able to leave on a very positive note. So that's my long-winded answer to your very, very short That was question. a very long-winded answer. <laughs> Derek, I'm curious. Like, if you, if you would ask the agents that came in and delivered a listing presentation, is there a huge gap between how much they think they talk and how much they actually talk? Dramatic. So, um, and, and that's, you know, one of the things that just to, before we move on, what Greg just said, that's something you can't really teach, right? Being able to zig and zag. But I, I think, unfortunately, people come in, they say, okay, this is what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, you know, I, I'm going to go with the flow of this conversation. I'm going to have a conversation with someone. And when I see them start shutting down, I'm going to shut that down, whatever it is, uh, which is super, super important because people will show you when they're not into what you're talking about. So stop talking about it. You don't have to say anything in particular when you're in there. You don't. You can move on. So I think that that was huge. But yeah, dude, I've had I've seen people come in and, and rip for 35 straight minutes, just brrrr for 35 straight minutes, and then be like, "So do you guys have any questions? Where do I start? Wow. Go back to the beginning? <laughs> I'm dead serious. Wow. So like, the, this tip is you know this tip is talk less, listen more for sure. And, and what that means is, you know, get your information across in the form of questions. Like if you have you're like, okay, I want to talk about, you know, something that I do, you know, instead of saying, this is what I do, ask them a question about what they think an agent should do or what they would like for you to do about that thing. And then say, well, this is what I usually do, but I'll do exactly what you want me to do. You know, I mean, form everything in the, in the, in the uh, phrase of a question. There should be very little declaration going on because who knows if your declaration is something they give a shit about or not. So, you know, finding out what they give a shit about is more important than whatever it is you want to declare in that presentation. So, you know, phrase it in the form of a question. And you may find when you ask them about that question, they may say, you know, I don't give a shit about that. Like, okay, well then what is more important to you of this next few things I want to talk about this, this, or this, you know, so, being amenable is, is important, but also, you know, figuring out is what I'm about to say, does it even matter to them? Mm. You know, yeah. Well, and the only way to know that is you'd have to ask enough questions. And that's why I like the questions kind of about, you know, have you, you know, when, when was the last time you went through this process? Tell me about your experience with that last person that like that will get them to open up kind of about what they liked and what they didn't like. And, you know, I, I do that on my side, which is professional services, you know, like, what do you, you know, what else do you like out there? What, what have, you know, when you work with like professional services or if you've hired someone to do marketing before, what did you like and what didn't you like about that experience? Cause then you get a feel for what is important to them. You know, like, Hey, here's all this arsenal of stuff I could say. I don't need that. I don't need that. They're really concerned about that. And then mm-hmm. you can just, you know, and I love that point about phrasing things in the form of a question, delivering like the way that you ask your question is a great way to convey information, but without coming across as just making declarative statements. Really, really you know, good. Yeah. When I, uh, I, I've gone on hundreds of listening presentations with my father, and if anyone don't know the T, the T D D the Grandmaster, that's why I'm the Junior Grandmaster. Um, I am not, I'm not kidding you guys. This is what he does at listening presentations. He just busts out his, his piece of paper and he does this, and it's the most mind-boggling thing on planet Earth. He just draws an L. Does this, so he'll go like he'll so he'll draw like a, a L like this, and then he'll just start doodling on this thing and just he'll make it look like he's really doing a graph about you know financials and the market and anything, but he's like writing their names, you know, drawing it back here, putting a bubble around it, you know, writing a number, but he's he's so relaxed that it relaxes the homeowners to almost a, a, like a, a a state of just zombies. They're just like uh huh. Right. Thursday broker tour, Sunday open house. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <I'm> here. <laughs> but it's amazing to watch him do it. It is a masterful job. And the point is, is that like you're sitting there and you're, and he's asking questions the entire time, but he's yet, he's on point with them and their needs. He's not talking at them. He's talking with them. 
Hmm. And that's the distinguishing difference that I've learned from him. And to your point, Derek, I mean, go and ask the questions, figure out, you know, Bob and we do the dance. And it is a dance, guys. It's an energy shift, right? Who, which way are they going? Are you going to match them? Or are you going to step on their toes? What, how is this going to play out? So think about that next time you're going into a listing presentation and you have the opportunity to speak with a homeowner because they're nervous. They are nervous, man. This is a big deal. It's a life shift for them. It's going to be, are they going to pick the right person or the wrong person and get the more, most money or the least money? So be in sync with what their needs are and be willing to walk away. Derek, have you ever seen someone not like, be willing to walk away from the listing if it wasn't the right time for the homeowner? Uh, an agent walk away? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, Say, hey, look, I don't Absolutely. think this is the right time for you guys. You guys really should stay stay here. This is not the right time for you to sell. The market's low. Yeah. Instead of closing them. Matt, I have heard agents say that. Um, but I think what is uh, what's interesting to, to pay attention to with regard to that is, like, when agents come in hot and start bringing all sorts of heavy information and heavy news or, like, heavy opinions, it doesn't work out. Um, like the, the key and sort of what we're talking about here, asking questions like, you know, what the, the grand grandmaster was doing was building trust in a way that you can't really teach people how to build trust. He's treat, you know, he's building trust through the, the energy, like creating a certain energy in the room that it becomes infectious mm -hmm. and it is a certain, you, you lower people's b blood pressure and they will remember that you will always be associated with a certain calm, like thinking about thinking your name will bring a certain calm to them. And there's nothing that can beat that. Um, but you know, what, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is just to, to say, you know, like ask, ask the question to find out what actually matters to them so that you can help them fulfill that. Because so many times when people come in and they have, and they ask a lot of questions, they're these like preform questions. It's like, so, um, where were you born? <laughs> where, like, where did you grow up? Um, you know, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Um, and this is like Sounds obvious like bullshit ever. You know what I mean? It's like here, here's 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 my listing presentation in in 30 seconds. Here's my pamphlet of all, I'm awesome at selling real estate. Okay, I have systems, I have a track record. I, I I will sell your home for top dollar. And any agent who doesn't come in and confidently say that you shouldn't even consider. Here's all that information that we can go over. But what I want to do is I want to make your dreams come true. That's my job. That's what you're hiring me for. I want to know every single thing that you want to happen and the way you want it to happen. And I want to write down a list. And I'm going to make every single fucking thing on that list come true. I swear to you. I'm going to put all my energy into it. And I'm going to make it happen for you and your family. That's what you're hiring me for. There's my listing presentation. Okay. So that's what really matters at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, that's our guy. He's going to do it. He's got the energy. He's, he's going to make it happen. So when we talk about asking questions, it's not just about asking questions. You also, you need to take notes. You have mm -hmm. to actually be sitting yeah. there and writing down the stuff that people are saying. They want to know that they're being heard. Not just yeah. that they're talking, but that they're actually being heard. That's part of the trust building process is people want to be heard. And if you didn't hear them, if you ask them a question that they've already answered, it will piss them off. They're like, this guy is not listening to me. Um, and our second episode, which is live on our website, winthislisting.com, that was the big thing that the, that the homeowner said from the very beginning. She said, I had agents before. They don't listen to me. Mm -hmm. And then when she went through the presentation process, she, would, she was telling me, she was giving me feedback. I don't think he's listening. I've said this already. I've been, I actually went in and had toured the house that he's tried to pitch me on. Like he's not listening. So it, when we say listen, it's not just about sh closing your mouth. It's about opening your ears, taking notes so that you can actually digest information <laughs> and then be able to apply it. <laughs> so it, it, yes, it's very right. true. I mean, we are Deborah Dupree, Dr. Deborah Dupree, who did, uh, you know, you know, being an introvert in real estate, you know, a workshop uh, earlier this week. Her first thing was talking about active listening. And that's what you need to do here. You need to actively listen to what the words are coming out of their mouth. And Derek, like you said, I take I take, you know, listing sheets like this and I, I write all over them. I write hardwood floors. I talk, you know, when they do them, I take notes, I flip it over and I ask them a series of questions, you know, like what do you, what was your last experience? What are the most three most important things that you want to see in a real estate agent? What are the three things you just can't stand in a real estate agent? What's your timeline looking like? So on and so forth. Cause I want to, I mean, I want to paint a picture. I want to see where these people are. Are they, are they just toying with the idea of, of listing? Or, they, they, or there's a real problem they haven't told me yet that they got to get going on that I wasn't privy to. Because the more I know Great, about can them, I, I can move forward. Can I ask you to do a, a test for me? Oh, God. What did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> 
print sure. out a sheet of paper next time you go on a listing presentation. Yeah. And right at the top, your wish list. And then underneath it, put the Greg McDaniel guarantee. I guarantee to put 100% of my effort to making every single one of these things come true and hand it to them and have them write on that all the things that they want to come true, all the things that are their wishes. Done. And then like in little print, like the Greg McDaniel guarantee, I promised to do everything I can in my power and with all the resources that I have access to, to make every single one of these things happen for you. I'm and right. Tell me how they, <laughs> how they, how they react to that. <laughs> and I'll be like, like guys, if you hate this, my friend Derek Evans down in San Diego, <laughs> it was all him, man. That's now right. this is what I do. <laughs> That's right. But I love that. Yeah, 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 it's great. You're putting them in, in, in charge of their wish list, then you're like, because you can really be able to look at it and be like, look, I can't do that. If it, maybe if you can't do it. Or, or if you can't, maybe fucking find someone that can partner up with you on the listing that can provide that service or trait or aspect that you lack. I mean, there's a way to skin the cat, but I think that, that that right there is worth you coming on the show alone. I mean, there's a ton of other information, but that was platinum. What is even gold? It was platinum. <laughs> Bam. Yeah. Like, there I'm thinking is. a lot about how this applies to uh, even B2B sales consultations, but uh, all right, are we on tip number five or six? I want to make sure we get a chance to get everything out for people. Uh, that, good question. I'm not sure what number it is um, at this point, but I have I have my list here. So this next one is is something we've kind of already covered, which is just to be flexible. I think you know, a lot of time people come in and they're like super rigid about, okay, well this is how I work. You know, like my process is this. We do things this way. And um, even if you think that is a value add by coming and saying, you know, this is how we work, this is how everything happens. Um, just be, just be careful with that. That's turned people off. I've seen a lot of times cause people are like, I don't feel like this person was very flexible. It seemed like they had their way of doing things. And you know, if we wanted to do something differently, I don't feel like they'd be open to it. People won't ask. They'll assume they won't ask if you're flexible you know, or not, you know, they won't like test the waters with you. You have to show them that you're flexible. Um, by telling them that you're flexible and that you you ha you have a, a system that you use to sell homes that's very effective, um, but that you're willing to work with them and whatever and, and work with them on the wish list. Um, one thing that I will tell you is that if you la if you can laugh with them, you have a great chance to win that listing. Um, now that's the that's the leading indicator for me when I'm watching listing presentations. If there's laughter going back and forth, genuine, comfortable. Not uncomfortable, but comfortable <laughs> laughter going on. <laughs> okay. There's, I'm just picturing I'm just picturing somebody just laughing uncomfortably at Greg. Like, <laughs> yeah. Great, Greg. That's he, awesome. he's human. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, clarifying, yes. Sounds is awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh <laughs> so yeah, if you have genuine laughter, if you can laugh with them, like that that is better than breaking bread and doing all those other things that you could do like genuinely laughing with someone um that's where i go oh shit that person's gonna win when i hear that going on i see that mm -hmm. happening i'm like that's gonna be tough to beat right there and, and i haven't seen an instance in which yeah there's been genuine belly laughter from with an agent and, and, a, and a crew a homeowners that they haven't ended up winning so i know that's something that you can't just be like hey go be funny but I'm just letting you know that if you can be so relaxed, it's a tall order for most people. <laughs> it's it's a tall order. But if like if you can just be relaxed enough to see when those opportunities come up, to just be relaxed enough to laugh yourself, it's a contagious thing. Like don't not laugh. Don't think that laughing is unprofessional or something like that. Like if that yeah. comes up, don't be embarrassed by that. Don't be like, wow, oh, oh, I need to get back to professional me. Like that right there is your golden goose if you can laugh at them. Yeah. Um, I think, not, not yeah. Laugh. <laughs> With no, them, not, not at them. No. <laughs> well, there's, there's a great, there's a great little story I heard the other day. I was listening to uh, Patrick Lencioni on, um, he was on a podcast talking about uh, leadership and and hiring. He said that Southwest, when they hire pilots, they will actually have them change into like take off their suit pants and like change into shorts uh, as part of the interview process. I don't know if they take them out on the tarmac, something like that. But anyway, they put them in a in a position where it. The only the people with a genuine sense of humor, like a self, de they actively look for a self-deprecating sense of humor in the hiring process, and they screen out the people that might be technically qualified but have a hard time doing something like that, just dressing in clothes that they're not comfortable in, and they can't have a sense of humor about themselves and look a little bit silly to themselves. Um, they screen them out. Hey, go work, go work for Delta and United. We don't need you. Really? Mm -hmm. That's funny. My uh, my, 
my not my, she's not my real big sister, she, but she did help raise me, uh, Patty, and she's dating a, a senior pilot over at Southwest, and he fits that qualification perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like he's a little bit quirky, but very professional, but yet he can take himself a little lighter than than most people. I can totally see him just rocking like the shorts and with the you know sports coat out on the trauma. Like, yep, hey, what's going on? You know, chop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You yeah, own it. Around. <laughs> own work those shorts yeah so that's uh yeah i think that's if you're going to have a certain sense of humor it definitely be a self-deprecating sense of humor it probably goes a long way <laughs> work yeah. those shorts. yeah there's there's some agents i've seen <laughs> who have that and they'll say that and they have sort of like they're like you can tell it's sort of a can joke but it's funny enough mm-hmm. um that it gets people going and loosens them up and that makes a big big difference um yeah. so Two more things I want to share with you guys um, that are on my list here, which is uh, number one, this one is the, what I think is the best offer, a most unique offer I've seen a real estate agent make um, mm-hmm. to a homeowner of value. And that was to put them and their kids up in a hotel for the weekend where they did the open house. So it, it, and it sounds really s- simple and, you know, and whatnot, but for the homeowners, they were like, wow, that is so cool. So you're going to put us up in a hotel uh, we're going to take the kids. We're just going to get out of here. We're going to get out of your way. And then that way the agent has all day Saturday to get everything looking the way they need to in the house. Um, and then they have all day Sunday to do the open house and have the homeowners just completely out of the way on the little mini vacation. Um, that, that was not only did I see the homeowners like look at each other and be like, hmm. that, but <laughs> the actual results that they generated, by the way, they won. Uh, the actual results they generated from, from doing that were superb. So yeah. that was one thing that I've seen offered that I, I've never, I didn't see, I've never seen any other agent offer it. Only one agent offered that, but it was, it was a big game changer. You know, we did that for a while until the hotel we use is a boutique hotel in the city. And it would be, we would say, Hey, we're going to send you to for the weekend, you know, to the concierge level, you know, at, at this hotel, um, we had a hookup there and they would hook them up with like a really nice bottle of wine when they came in and then, you know, a whole little basket and the whole, and the whole nine yards. It worked so well, we quit using it. You know, and that's the problem. With, yeah, don't look at me like that, Johnson. I'm, I'm so, sorry. I'm just, this is one of those occasions where I have to look at you like you're an insane person because what <laughs> the hell? Well, they closed down. You know, we just never went out and got another yes, hotel. Yes, thank God there are no other hotels in the city of San Francisco that you could possibly contract <laughs> with that will do that because, after all, Salesforce holds their annual convention in Sacramento for that exact reason. There are no hotels in, in all of San Francisco. Okay, pipe down. <laughs> I'm writing it down. Now it's done. So you have a system. <sighs> What's what's the over under on me blowing my own head off sometimes? Like like just 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 <laughs> my head exploding from all the things that Greg says. It works so well we quit doing it. <laughs> oh, so that, was, that was a big one, and oh. I uh, I got I got one more. Okay. And this is more of a piece of advice, and it's just that uh, around what you what most agents think is valuable versus what homeowners think is valuable. Mm. So agents think that how many homes they've sold. And how many deals they do every year is a very valuable thing. But what homeowners think is more valuable is how available you are. Mm-hmm. So the, the, there's a huge dichotomy between those two things. So like if I'm an agent, I'm coming in and I'm saying, you know, I do, I do 200 deals a year. What the homeowner is hearing is you're really busy. And you may not be available when it's time to, you know, for me to need you. Uh, so they are much more interested in how available you are than how many homes you've sold. Much, much more. And Very. so be careful about that. You know, it's, it's something you, you really need. If you want to talk about how many homes you've sold because you do think that's an advantage or you do think that the homeowners care because you've asked them questions, great. But make sure they know how available you will be uh, because that is something that they really do care about. And I've seen top agents get eliminated first because the homeowner simply said, you know what, they have a lot going on. They sound too busy. We don't we don't want to just be another name on their on their board. We want to know that they care and that they'll be available for us. You know, Derek, that that is that is so true. Um, I, the, I always bust out this, which is my book, and I always point to where is she? Eileen, our team manager. I, I say that I, I that's our first page saying like she anytime you guys need anything, she's going to be available. She works the weekend. She'll pick up the phone and she doesn't answer. She'll call you back as quick as possible. Um, you're going to have my cell phone so you can call me anytime that you if you have any questions, you can't reach her. But she's going to be in the majority of the day to day communications with you. But if you need me, you can always reach me. And then I break into the um, 
the the number of listings or their map and all the shiny stuff over in, in back but it's in the that's more in the middle it's not in the front of this book that i hand out to everybody and i made a critical error uh last summer i went into a listing presentation i was doing the dog and pony show i had them wrapped around my finger but there was a landmine i didn't see that i stepped on and it was the fact that i kept using us team 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 what they heard was i'm going to hand them off they weren't important to me that I would that they would just talk to Eileen and I that I was just going to be that would be hand I would be sloughed them off to like an underling on the team yeah. and I and I didn't get the listing I asked them well you know why didn't we get it I thought we had a good rapport what did I do what did I do wrong they said well we just felt that you weren't going to be there for us and it was an epiphany I'm like what the fuck are you serious and I and I explained it to them and they're like oh like they were bummed that they didn't pick us. They didn't ask the question, but I didn't do a good enough job explaining it. And I learned a strong lesson there that I thought I was bringing a ton of value, but in reality, I was I just stepped in a big pile of you know nasty, and I, we didn't get the listing, which is that's important. Right. What they were hearing was you were busy and unavailable. Yep, that's yeah. exactly what they heard. And yeah, which which is a good point because I, I think if you if you are a top agent and you are a top rainmaker, Greg, you, that is the solution. It's not mm -hmm. to you still you don't adjust your business to you know make yourself more available, but you do create a system where the system guarantees that they are available. Like behind the scenes, you have to still run your systems and you have to run your process, otherwise you're not going to sell. You're not going to sell 30 homes a year, let alone 200 homes a year. Um, but the presentation of it. Greg, that is that is the perfect balance is, hey, mm -hmm. I may not be because my job is this slice, this slice and this slice. That's that's where I'm really good at. But the rest of all that time, you have this lovely person who is much nicer, much better at the details than me that you can keep in touch with. And they're going to keep you up to date and they're going to be available. And then, Greg, you've always talked about like you have like the three blue shirts. That was kind of part of your sales prop, too, is just the fact that you're a three person team. You always have like a blue shirt. Uh, available. On, you know, we have one of the yeah, partners boots on, on boots on ground at all times, so that if the, if a fire starts up, we'll be able to handle it. You know, so on and so forth. I always say I love my dad, but I don't vacation with my dad, so I'll be here or he'll be here, one of the two. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> being having that availability and knowing that, you know, like I want I want to listen to a presentation the other day. And the guy's like, you know, so uh, are you gonna be around? I'm like. Yeah, he said, good, because my last agent, he he signed the papers and he took off for two weeks. I'm like, oh, well, that sucks. His other question, which I've never, ever gotten this question before, Derek, and I want to see if you've ever heard this before, because it blew me away. He's like, he had his checklist out, and he had asked me all these questions. I was like, first off, I'm like, I love how detail-oriented you are. That's awesome. And so his first question was, so what's your day job? Uh, um, I'm, I'm doing it, <laughs> real estate. <laughs> and, and I'm like, why did you ask? <laughs> He's like, well, my last real estate agent was a dentist. I'm like, what? Wow. And, Random. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, have you ever had any kind of crazy ass questions like that? You know, when the agent, when the homeowner has some just off the wall question that the, the agent was like, huh? No, I've never, I've never heard that one. <laughs> um, but I think part of the, uh, part of the value that the show brings is that we vet the agents and they know that, that we're bringing like top professionals in. Mm. Um, so I don't think we get that question, but I have seen homeowners like go crazy um like just lose their minds a little bit and i've had to like sort of wrangle them back to reality like right before so i always talk with them in detail about what they think the home is worth and stuff like that ahead of time i give all that information to the agents so they know what they're walking into but i i've, I've had a homeowner um you know like just all of a sudden at the last second be like well what i think we could sell this house for seven hundred thousand like just come up with this and it's like 550 is what we've been talking about <laughs> and I'm like really why why do you what 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 changed did you find an oil like did you guys hit strike something or what is <laughs> <laughs> that is a what great happens? response to that question. What did you uncover <laughs> in your backyard yeah. of, of some what kind of oil find? and or mineral deposit that would lead you to believe that it's worth seven? <laughs> is there a Van Gogh in the attic that comes with it? Like what happened? <laughs> and so they were – and she was like, you know, I just think the right family, like in this – you know, for the right buyer would pay that for this, you know? Oh, like I just think that they would. And I was like <laughs> – Go in peace, my child. Okay. Okay. I was like, okay. Um, I was, I was basically just like, don't screw this up. And I didn't, wasn't talking about the show. I was talking about their ability to sell a home in a great market with things going really well um, and to really get the best possible price for the home. I was just like, don't, don't screw it up.
don't screw it up no. by by losing your mind. And I, I, I had to be very real with them because the agents were about to come in and present, and she started saying this crazy shit. Mm. And um and and the husband was like, honey, I think you're being unrealistic. And she was like, no, 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 no. I think I think I think someone would buy this house for that much. I do. And she was dead serious. And I and so that was a weird last I had to like go play. Dude, that was the that was the craziest that's thing crazy. that's ever. Cause I had three agents waiting outside. We had already shot mm-hmm. like a bunch of stuff to get ready. They were about to come in and start presenting, and she dropped that on me, and I was just like, "Ah, uh, shit." <laughs> um, well, welcome to every no, day as a real stop. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what it's like in the trenches when they pull out like, "Well, Zillow told me it was worth blah," and you're like, "Ah, damn it, Zillow." So what I actually do is. I take it, and if you guys can see that, it's my, that's my really nice handwriting. I go and I look at all the different websites, and I write down what the different websites are saying to you know out there. And oh, so, just I'm, so I'm, you know. I'm preloaded because that's what mm-hmm. they're looking at. Yeah. So I'll just say, you know, yeah. Matt, Julian, your three obese babies, you know, what do you, what, what would you think that your home could sell for in today's market? <laughs> Derek loves the joke. That's awesome. <laughs> um, oh, and you know what? It, it disarms them. And well, well, Zillow told me it was worth this. I'm like, that's an interesting point. You know, have you found a comp that, cause I've been looking, I've been looking hard. Mm-hmm. I turned over every rock for you. Did I miss something? Did I miss a comp that you're aware of that I, maybe I, I don't know? Well, no. Okay. Well, cause the buyers are going to look exactly at the stuff that I'm showing you. And I just want to make sure that I didn't miss something so that we can get the highest price for you. I mean, that's why I'm here on my job is to get the highest price. For you. So yeah. bonus tip, bonus. Uh, the best rebuttal bonus time. <laughs> the best rebuttal that I've seen uh, for the Zestimate is um, one of the agents actually brought a printout of the disclosure that Zillow makes about the Zestimate. <laughs> and they were like, here's a copy for you. Here's a copy for me. I'm going to read it. You can follow along. And the disclosure about the Zestimate is basically that this is a fucking guess. Mm-hmm. This is a wild ass guess. And you can't trust it. It cannot be trusted. Yeah. Your home will not necessarily sell for this. But like it says all that stuff. So the best thing to do when someone starts talking about Zestimate is, you know, have printed copies of that shit with you in your car at all times and <laughs> hand it to people. Be like, read that. <laughs> That's I'm good. Well, and the fact that Spencer Rask, Raskoff's own home sold for like 35% below his own. 61. 61. 61. He was, it was, 60, he was, it was 60, 60% of the valuation. That means it's 40% off. Thank you, Greg. No, we had this discussion. <laughs> anyway, all right, that's a good example. Um, but okay, so uh, <laughs> so Derek, tell everyone where they should go to connect with you and catch up with the show and keep tabs on it, watch it, all the good stuff. Yeah, uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, the interwebs, the traditional interwebs. It's everything's win this listing. So at win this listing on Instagram, uh, slash win this listing on Facebook, and win this listing dot com on uh on the world wide webs actually i dropped your link into the news feed so you guys it is already there you guys can go take a look at it. you don't even have to hunt and peck it's all we just deliver it nice and warm like those cookies you know on a listing presentation <laughs> oh i just it smells like home to me thank you Derek. Oh. <laughs> all right, you guys together <laughs> oh, <good Lord. laughs> oh. Okay, guys. Hey, go follow me on Facebook, please. Stalk the shit out of me on online. Don't do it in person. I'm six foot five and I carry guns at my house, not in public. That's a felony. Uh, but um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> follow me because if you guys like what we put out, man, Matt and I are putting this stuff out three days a week: Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, also, I do a 4:30 show. Had a great guest on last night, JJ. We went over scripting and role play. It was amazingly good content. We're going to bring him on the show. He's with Intero out of Southern California. Just gold, guys. Go watch, go, go watch that and follow me on Instagram as well at McDanielCallahan.RealEstate. And then, again, follow me on Facebook, guys. Matt, where the can they stalk you, pal? Uh, they should stalk me on Facebook and Instagram. I am pursuing results across all platforms. And then, guys, go check out rockstarprospecting.com. The next class is opening up in April. We are halfway through our March class, uh, which has been awesome. Uh, on Monday coming up, the next session is going over, uh, like, role play, going over the go for no script, uh, the whole go for no philosophy philosophy, which has changed, Greg, the way you do your your circle prospecting and can be applied to really anything in sales. Um, that is the next uh, the next session. We're right in the middle of that. So guys, go sign up for Rockstar Prospecting the next session uh, before we, we uh, turn that over and retire that particular uh, program and uh, get on with something new. But, so we're working but, on some cool stuff behind the scenes. 
What, what's our new thing, Matt? Yeah, the new, well, the new thing is called Get Now Business, N-N-O-W. So it's all about the things that if you're, if you need to refresh, restart, you're parachuting into a new market or you're a new agent or about to become a new agent, what are the things you need to be doing right now to get clients as quickly as possible and get them in the pipeline and get some closed deals. And we're, we're, we're eliminating two of the old favorites, which everyone despises, no cold calls and no cold door knocks. Those will not be a part of getting now business, guys, so don't be fearful. We're here to save you. Matt, put your cape on. Now fly away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's do that, actually. Let's fly away. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Derek, thanks for being here. Everybody go to winthislisting.com and follow him on uh, Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff. And yeah. until the next time, uh, have a great weekend. And if this is not the weekend for you, we're very, very sorry. Yeah, have a nice Monday if you're watching on Monday. We're going to go have a good weekend. Peace out, ninjas. We're gone.